Hello YouTube and welcome to a how to set up a vRising dedicated server. Um, I'm not going to go into what vRising is. You probably know about it. It's pretty popular at the moment. Um, you know, in a nutshell, it's a bit of an ARPG mixed with um, survival elements and you play as a vampire. So yeah, you, there's a bit of resource gathering and some mechanics around the vampire element, you know, with blood and whatnot. So, um, yeah, if you need, if you want to know more about the game, just search for Feet Rising and you'll find tons of videos. There's tons of streamers. Um, there's lots of tricks and <laughs> tips and tricks and all that sort of stuff. So, um, if you're here, you probably already know about it. And the main reason we're here today is to have a look at setting up a dedicated server. So, it is online play. You can play a private game. You host your own world on your own machine. Um, but there's another way where you can host a dedicated server. So a couple of options here. You can either rent a server. Um, if you click any, either of these links, they're just going to open a URL with some in info. Um, rent a server is going to take you to G portal, um, which you will actually see in the list of the main servers when you join. There's, there's a quite a few G portal servers that you can join um, but you can actually rent your own if you want to um, so you have to pay for that obviously um, there's also a way for you to host your own on your own hardware if you wanted to so if you click on this it's going to take you to the github page with a whole bunch of instructions so you know if you'd like to just read the instructions and go set it up that way then click on that you can stop watching and you can go and follow the instructions. Um, I'm going to take you through basically step by step what you need to do um, if you don't want to actually go and read the whole page. So I'm just going to go back to the main screen and I'm going to flick over to my other machine. And I am going to need to just tweak some settings a little bit just because I've been having some issues with um, this teleport. I'm actually using a plugin in OBS called OBS Teleport. Um, which essentially is streaming my other machine over the network so I can capture it here. Anyway, um, yeah, I, some, for some reason I seem to need to have either OBS in the foreground or I just need to tweak the teleport settings every time I flick back to that machine. So here we go, we're in Steam. Uh, what you'll need to do is in your Steam library, search for vRising dedicated server. So you'll see it come up there. You need to click on that and install it. Um, I've already installed it, so you can see I've got a launch button. But once it's installed, you can right click, go to the manage menu and browse local files. There's a couple of files that are important here. The main one is the start server.bat file, which, pardon me, I'll open in code, or VS code. And there's a couple of things that you'll need to change here. So the first one is the server name. Go away, updater. So change that name to whatever you want to name your server. Um, I've just called this one Dragon Test Rising Server. And I'm going to change the world here to World 3 because I've done a couple of tests beforehand um, just to get it up and running. Um, that is going to be the name of the file that, that your world gets saved into. So if you want to start a fresh one, give it a new name. If you want to do a PVE server, you can give that a separate name. You do a PVP server, you can give that a separate name and so forth. Um, there's two other files that are important for you to, that you need to change. So we'll go into this vRiser, server data, streaming assets and settings. And you want to open both the server game settings and server host settings.json files. The first one is the server host settings.json and two things here that you need to change. Um, one that's optional. First one is the name. Again, so name that the same as what's in your batch file. Dragon test be rising server. Name that the same. And then the save name again. Keep that the same as what's in your batch file. So dragon test underscore world three. The optional setting here is you can set a password for your server. So if you want people to have to enter a password to, to join, then enter your password here. The other file was the game server game settings.json. And this is the, the settings file that basically tells the server what mode it's in. So we're doing PVE for this one. Um, and if you want a quick and easy way to get up and running with this, 
just go back to the streaming assets folder and there's a game settings presets folder which has a big list of a bunch of settings that you can use for different types of servers so um, I've done the standard PVE so you can see here all I've literally what I've done is I've just copy and pasted that into my file and then saved it um, if you wanted to do a PV, standard PVP server, you can open that standard PVP.json, copy and paste it into the game settings.json and save it. Um, let's open up the standard PVE hard and see what's different. So you can see it's got some different settings for like the drop table modifier, uh, max health, power, etc. etc. So there's a whole bunch of different settings for the game server. Um, I'm not going to go into them here because I, I don't know everything about it and also it's probably too big a list to go through. Um, simplest way to get up and running is just to copy and paste one of those settings and then what we need to do to start the server is go back to the top folder and run that batch file. Where is it? Start server.bat. You'll see the console window open up. Um, it doesn't give you any more information than this, like it doesn't have a little info scrolling through saying it's running and what it's doing it's just that's it it's up so what I'm going to do now I'm going to flick back to the game we're going to go into play I'm going to go online play and we're going to go find servers so in here um, it's just going to show you some recommended ones or you can do display all servers and you can actually search and you'll see mine's already come up here because I was testing it earlier um, but you can put in a search by name and it will filter through everything that's available so you can see there's mine up and running um, it needs the password if I hit join with the wrong password it's going to ask me to, for the password again so we'll put the right password in this time and before you go and try and join this server it won't be there um, when I um, this is just here for a test so and just for this video so by the time you see this on YouTube uh, that server will already be offline but there you go we're in um, let's randomize my vampire that looks interesting and create give it a little bit to do its thing and we're in space to wake up in and I'm running around on my own server which is pretty cool and this also means that my friends can join so this is the main reason I've done it is um, if anyone of my friends that want to play jump in my world I can just give them my server details and they can jump in and play um, obviously if you want to play on a more populated server you can join one of the public ones but again if you want to host your own and just have it with your own friends then that's what you can do um, so just to prove that it is actually live and working I'll flick back to the other machine and yes it's still working cool so what I can do is just see there it says control C to exit so we'll hit control C. That should stop. Terminate batch job. Yes. Well, you can just close the console window as well, and that will kill it. Um, so I'll flick back to the game, and it should say, yep, communication with server was lost. It's because I shut it down. And that's it. That is basically the simplest way to do it. Um, as I said at the start, you can go through the GitHub readme file and follow the instructions on there how to do it. I think going through Steam is probably the easiest way to get it up and running because you just install it through there and the files are all there for you. Um, yeah, and there's just a couple of couple of files that you need to edit to change some names and passwords and whatnot and then you're up and running. That last thing that I mentioned before that might have been slightly important out of the host settings. Um, so I'm just going to flick back to the other machine. Just let me tweak that teleport setting again so that it comes more responsive. Yep, cool. You can see again. Cool. Um, so these two here, the port and the query port, this is what the game is going to try and talk to the server on. Um, if you don't see your server coming up in that list when you do the search, you may need to do some port forwarding. Now, I'm not going to run through how to do that because every server or every machine every router is different every network is different um, there is a real handy site here called portforward.com so you can go in here and you can actually search for your router um, you know you might have a you might have a d-link 
Well, I will close the ad. You might have a D-Link DIR600. Click on there and it's going to take you through step by step how to go through and set up the port forwarding rules. So that's a real handy one to follow. Um, I had to do it on mine. Um, you can try it without doing it. Your router might be smart enough to automatically forward the ports to the right machine. Um, I did it on mine. Um, you know, it's probably on the safe side to do it anyway, so it definitely send those ports to the correct machine. Um, your mileage might vary, may vary, so just, yeah, if you need to, follow the instructions on that portforward.com and, and you should be right. Alrighty, so that's it in a nutshell. That was how to set up your own vRising server. Um, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, I'll do my best to answer them if I can. Um, or I can find out. If I don't know the answer, I'll try and find out for you. But yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.